Welcome back, Sethling here. You're watching my Turtle Programming Tutorial Series. This is intended as a general programming tutorial for people with zero programming experience at all. It uses the Computercraft mods. These turtles are from the Computercraft mod. And you can find that in the video description, although I'm going to be using the Feed the Beast mod pack in these videos. Uh, turtles use Lua, which is a programming language, but the principles that uh, that I'll be teaching are common to most programming languages, so it should be very useful. And I encourage you to follow along on your own, and hope you learn something valuable. Alright, so the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, what is a turtle? A turtle is a type of computer that can move around, and first thing I need to do is craft one. This is the crafting recipe. Uh, this, this will make a computer here. Computer. And then to make a turtle out of the computer, we surround the turtle with iron, and add a chest, because the turtle has an inventory. And the last thing I'm going to do is I make it a, a mining turtle so that it can mine stuff in addition to moving around. Now this is a turtle. When we put it on the ground, we have our turtle. This is what it looks like. This is the front of the turtle. It's got kind of eyes here, or a sensor. And in the back it's got, I don't know, some sort of port. <laughs> um, I'm in creative mode, so i got an extra turtle out of that. Now, when you right-click on the turtle, you get a command prompt. Now some of you know what this is, probably a lot of you. Command prompt is an interactive way of, well, interacting with the turtle. Now the turtle has a directory structure. So if I type dir, D-I-R, I can see a list of the directories or folders in the root directory. Now, the root directory is just the default directory that's at the top level. Um, if I type CD, which stands for change directory, I can go to the ROM folder here. I can type dir again to see what folders reside in the ROM folder. If I type cd dot dot, uh, that will take me up a level, back to the root level. Uh, I can type uh, mkdir to create a directory, create a folder. It stands for a make directory. And so instance, I could make a directory called prog. And then if I type dir, now that'll show up next to ROM. Uh, if I go in there, it'll be empty if I type dir, so it just creates an empty folder. Uh, now if I go into the ROM directory, we can see there are several directories here. The helpful thing about this is that, okay, so ROM stands for read-only memory, which means you can't edit any of the programs or any of the folders or anything that resides in this folder. So if I go to programs, uh, it, it contains a list of the built-in programs. If I type dir again, we can see a list of the folders and files in this directory. Colored computer, HTTP, secret, and turtle are the folders, and then everything after that are files, which are programs. Um, if I go to the turtle directory, it contains a list of programs which are useful for turtles. So these are fun to play around with on your own. Uh, you might look, look online to see what they do. Uh, you can also look at them in order to see what code uh, runs the program. So if I type edit, let's see, what's a good program to look at? Maybe um, dance. Now I'm in, in a editor. This is, this is the code, this is the Lua code that runs the program called turn. Uh, I don't think there's too much code to it. It's just a lot of turn rights, turn lefts, some backs and stuff. Um, but this is what the code looks like. Uh, it's It may look like a jumble to you right now if you don't know anything about programming. But as we learn about this stuff, you're going to learn what all of this stuff does. And so I can, like it says at the bottom of the terminal here, I can press control to access the menu. And so now I can either save or exit or print. I didn't make any changes, but if I did, I could save those changes with save. I'm just going to exit. Um, and we can actually run the dance program here. And we can see the turtle is preparing to get down. Um, I can press any key to stop the groove. He's doing his little dance. Hmm. I guess he, he stopped. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we're going to go over a lot of the stuff that you need in order to write your own programs. So I'm going to get out of out of here. Um, I'm going to go back to the root folder. And so the next thing I want to show you is the Lua interpreter. Lua is the programming 
pro uh, programming language that runs the Turtles programs. If I type Lua, L-U-A, I'll get an interactive Lua prompt. You, set, you can see it says call exit paren paren to exit. Uh, in this Lua prompt, we can actually type in source code, and it will run it immediately. So, for instance, if I take a look at the turtle, he's facing this direction. If I type turtle turtle dot turn right, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, the turtle turns right. See, so change directions. Similarly, I can do turtle dot turn left and the turtle turns left. You'll notice each time I, I open and close the terminal, it stays where it was. We're still in the Lua interpreter. That's useful. Now I can type turtle.forward, and that'll try and make it go forward. You can see it, it says false after that, and it didn't move. Uh, that's because it doesn't have any fuel. So there are some things we can do uh, that we'll need to do in order to get the turtle fueled up. If I take a look at turtle.getItemCount, this is a what's called a function that will get the item count for a particular slot in the turtle's inventory. If you look to the right of my inventory, you'll see 16 slots, which the turtle has as its inventory. Now, the first slot is the top left, and then it goes in reading order, so the bottom slot is the bottom, or sorry, the, the last slot, the 16th slot, is the bottom right. So if I type turtle.getItemCount1, it says zero. If I put three coal there and repeat the commands, now it'll say three. Uh, if I try it on the second slot, it says zero. You can see if I put another item here, and now it'll say one. Okay, so this is how the turtle can tell how many items it has in each slot. It can't tell what type of item is in each slot. So that's something you're going to kind of have to manage for the turtle, but we'll kind of talk about that later. Uh, we can have the turtle select different slots in its inventory. You'll notice the first slot is kind of selected right now. If we select slot 2, uh, that'll be selected. Select slot 16. That'll move it move the selection to the bottom left. Um, so these are just the different functions that the turtle has. Now we can refuel the turtle. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at what the current fuel level is for, is for the turtle. We haven't put any fuel in it at all. This is the function get fuel level has to have a capital F and capital L, uh, and it'll return zero. So there's no fuel in it, which means it, it can move zero blocks. So if we type turtle dot refuel one, what this will do is it will look in the selected slot for some fuel source, and if there is a fuel source, it'll consume one item of that fuel source. So it'll use one fuel and it returns true, which means that it was able to consume one fuel. And now if we try turtle.getFuelLevel again, it says 96. That means it'll be able to move 96 blocks. So if I type turtle.forward, remember before this returned false, uh, it'll return true. Notice that I need the parentheses for this. It's just a convention for functions. Functions are just things that do stuff, <laughs> and they're very important to programming. This time, turtle.forward returned true, and it actually did move a little bit forward. Uh, let me try it again. Forward, returned true. Now if I type turtle.getFuelLevel again, we can see now it's 94 because it's moved two blocks. Uh, some other functions that allow the turtle to move around, turtle.up, you can see it moved up by one. Uh, turtle.down, moves down by one. Uh, if I type turtle dot down again, it's going to return false because there's a block in the way. It can't move through a block, and so it's going to try and go down. It's not going to be able to, and it'll return false. Now you'll notice each of these functions returned a value. Sometimes it was a number, like in the case of get fuel level. Uh, sometimes it was true or false, which is called a boolean variable, boolean value. Uh, a boolean value is just something that is true or false. It's like a condition, or yeah. OK, so we're going to write our first program now. And uh, I'm going to call, oh, actually, there's one thing I want to get to first. There's a print, print function. So if I print hello world, it will print hello world to the console. And then it returned one. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I'm not actually sure what that means. Um, I think that means that it succeeded, but uh, yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I'll have to look that up later. Uh, okay, so now 
I'm going to get get out of the Lua interpreter. Uh, remember, all of these things were code that Lua code that we could execute because we were in the Lua interpreter. I'm going to type exit with two parentheses. I'm going to get out of the Lua interpreter. I'm back in the command line. Um, I can type dir again and see where we are. We're in the root one. We have the prog directory and the, the rom directory. Now if I try something like turtle dot up, it's going to be confused because that's not a program. We're not in the Lua interpret any interpreter anymore. So it's not going to work. Oop, it's getting nighttime. Okay, so um, we're going to create a program. So in order to create a program, I'm just going to type edit and then name the program. I'm going to call this one check fuel. And this will put us in the editor. This is what we saw before when we were editing the source code for the dance program. Uh, so the first thing I want this program to do is print that it's checking the fuel. And so that's what this line will do. Um, now I want to use an if statement. If statements are really important for programming, they check if conditions are true, and if they are, they execute some code. So for instance, I'm going to type turtle dot get fuel level. Remember that this returned the fuel level of the turtle. And I'm going to check if that's less than 200. So basically we have some code here, turtle dot get fuel level uh, less than 200. That's either going to return true or false. Remember turtle dot get fuel level returned an integer, a number. That's going to be compared to 200. If it is less than 200, this whole thing, this whole thing, turtle dot get fuel level less than 200, will evaluate to true. Otherwise, if it's greater than or equal to 200, it'll evaluate to false. Uh, then we need a then. Uh, that's just part of the if then uh, syntax. That's how you type it out. Um, and then we have some other statements. Now, some other things I could have done here. I could type if true then, uh, and that would just always execute the statements. But let me let me finish this this statement here. So we're going to type if turtle dot get fuel level is less than two hundred. Then we're going to indent this just because it's um, common practice to indent blocks of code that happen within if statements. Uh, turtle dot refuel one. So it's going to try and refuel from the selected slot, and then uh, and then we'll print we'll print refueling. Okay, then we're going to use an else. So let me just finish doing all this, and I'll explain this. Else, I'm going to print no fuel necessary, and then end. So these are all really important. So if then else end are the critical structures to the to the if statement. So we have if and then a condition, and if that condition evaluates to true, then it's going to do the things in the top indented section here. So turtle dot refuel one, print refueling. If that condition wasn't true, then it's going to do what's in the else part of the uh, if statement. It's going to do the print no fuel necessary. So this should all be pretty logical. Uh, if you know if we don't have much fuel left, then we want to refuel, and we can print out what we're doing. And if we have plenty of fuel left, more than 200, then we can just say that there's no fuel necessary. Now if I exit this program, sorry, I have to save the program first. I have to save all the changes that I made. And then exit it. Now if I type dir, we can see there's a check fuel program. And if I run the check fuel program, it's going to say checking for fuel and refueling. We'll notice that there is now one last coal because it, uh, it refueled. Um, if I type it again, it's going to do the same thing. I'm going to put more coal in here. So now if I type check fuel a third time, it's going to say checking fuel and it'll say no fuel necessary. And that's because the fuel level is now over 200. We fueled it up sufficiently, it doesn't need any more fuel. Um, so this is just basically a really, really simple program. And it goes over the if else if then else end structure, and this is something we'll be using a lot. If then, uh, not not well, we won't always be using else, but it's it's optional. If I deleted all these lines, uh, this program would still work, and it just wouldn't print anything else out if the turtle had more than 200 fuel. And we can actually see that uh, if I save it and exit and I run check fuel, it'll just say checking fuel and then return to the command line.
So this is, yeah, just a basic, really basic program, and we're going to be sort of learning new concepts and, and writing programs like this as the tutorial series goes on. Uh, I think I will leave it there for this episode. Uh, tune in next time, and we'll learn about things like variables and some other stuff. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Gravel will throw.